Watch the wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him, because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Oh, hi, Susan. What are you doing there? What's that bobbing up and down? Well, this represents one of the important functions of the human body. Do you suppose you can guess which one it is? The body? Mm-hmm. Well, could it be the heart pumping back and forth? That's a very good guess. A very good guess. Uh, and a lot closer than you realize. Now, I've seen you uh, go off to school and come back uh, from school with uh, Kathy. Oh, yes. So I, I invited her over here with us today. And here she is right here. Well, that doesn't look like Kathy. Actually, it's much closer to Kathy than you think because, um, well, see, see if you can figure out what it's supposed to be from the things that are here. Well, here's a milk bottle filled with dark colored water. Mm -hmm. And another milk bottle with a balloon on it and a tube. And then a glass filled with water and a little tray here. And there's wire in the water. And then a plug and then a switch over here. And a box with a wire here and a piece of paper. And then there's sort of a, a rubber band there. And here's all the bones. Mm -hmm. Now, does that give you any clue as to how this represents Kathy? No, it doesn't. It well, doesn't actually, look anything like her. Maybe you can't see it right at this moment, but there are six different sections here because there are six uh, sort of separate systems within the body. And we're going to investigate them today. Do you know what they are? Six systems of the six body? Six systems? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the stomach, that's the digestive the system. The digestive system, that's one. And let's see. How about the brain, the brain system? And the nerves, oh. right, that's two. And the heart. Yes, the, the heart, heart and the blood, that's three. And well, the bones. The bones, that's four. And, two uh, more. Two more? I mm. can't think of any. Well, let's see if I can give you some clue as to what one of those that you missed is, and see if I can, you will be able to understand how this represents Kathy before All you right. leave today. Now, come on over here. Let's turn off the thing you call the heart. You see this iron here? Yes, I do. Okay, now you pick up the iron. Now, what is happening here? First of all, you have a joint right here, don't you? Yes, now put I the do. iron down again. And you have a bone right inside here. And you have bones all throughout your fingers here, don't you? Yes. Plus you have bone up here, and you have bones all over you. These, this is the skeleton system, right? In yes. order to move something, you have to move your skeleton, don't you? Well, yes, I do. In order for you to move, you have to move your skeleton, too. Okay, now what is it now, when you pick this iron up this time, that's moving the iron and your skeleton? My muscles. Right, and that's the other, one of the systems that you couldn't think of, was, was the muscle. Oh, I see. Now, let's take a look at what happens right here. Now, put the iron down. Now, see how the muscle is now? Now, pick it up again. Well, it bulges up when that's I pick right. the iron up. It bulges up, because in order for you to move your skeleton and this iron, this muscle has to bulge and get thicker. How, feel about feel the one on the back of your arm. Is that bulging out? No, it's loose. No, it's loose. So you can see that in order. What's the matter? <laughs> the iron's getting heavy. No, it doesn't weigh any different than uh, when you first picked it up. Well, it's still getting heavy. <laughs> Get heavy. This is because uh, in order for your muscle to hold the iron up, it has to bunch together and use up energy to do that and continue to to uh, uh, sort of squeeze together. And as it continues to squeeze, it gets tired and tired, and finally yes. down it goes. And it looks like the or feels like the iron is getting heavy. This time now, you understand. In order to move your hand up this way, this muscle this bunches muscle up. Bunches. Now push down on the iron with the back of your hand. Push down and feel underneath. Well, this one seems to be bunching up. That's right. It seems to be bunching up. Now, in order for you to understand how those two groups of muscles work together, I have a model of your arm. Oh, it looks just like my arm. <sighs> what does the wood part here represent? Well, that would be the skeleton. That's on the, the bone. skeleton, right. Now, you hold your arm up here like this one. Now, when you tighten this arm, what happens to that muscle? Well, it starts to bulge. Like this, doesn't it? Oh, yes, here it is, bulging. There's the bulge. <laughs> and notice that there is a tendon that goes down here that actually goes inside your arm and pulls this part of the arm up in very much the same way as this one does. Now, when you push down the other way, like this, and you felt the muscle bulge back yes. here, that's represented by this rubber band here in the back, see? Oh, now, that I one's see. tight. And when you pull the, your muscle the other way, when you tighten your arm, this muscle back here stretches, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how your muscles work to pull your arm up. And actually have combinations of two groups of muscles all over your body. All For instance, over? sure, you can turn your neck this way and back, can't you? So there must yeah. be one set to turn it and the other set to pull it back. Well, that's right. And same thing with your legs. You, put, you can put it forward and back, and back and whatnot. So there are two groups of muscles there. 
So now we know that the skeleton system is moved by the muscles. But the muscle has to get, uh, has to move at some particular time. Your muscle just doesn't move any old time, does it? It moves yeah. uh, at certain times. Yes. What is it that makes the muscle move? See if you can figure that out by raising that iron and seeing what happens to your muscle. Well, my muscle bulges here. And I put it down, it flattens out. And this one bulges when I'm pressing down. Well, so far, so good. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> These, one of those little buzzers, you know, that you use to shake hands. Oh, yes. And you jumped. Why did you jump? Well, that thing surprised me when you touched me with it. Yes. And so how did, why did your muscle move? Well, that touched me and I just when, pulled when it away. I, when this little plunger touches next to your skin, it made a, a buzz like that. Yes, it? it did. And it vibrated against your skin. So the skin has uh, sense cells in it, and those sense cells send a message right up to some of the centers in your brain, and the brain sent a message down over to your muscle and said, move, quick. Well, it happened move. very quickly, and too. And so you moved. So your muscle didn't just move all by itself, did it? No, it didn't. You had to get the information first from the sense cells through the brain to your muscle. Now, the same sort of thing happens in, uh, in other uh, sense perception. <laughs> Why are you jumping? Well, you're touching me with the pencil. And pain is another, although it didn't hurt too much. No, right? not too much. Well, pain is another thing. When, you, when your skin feels pain like this, it sends a message up to your brain, your hand automatically moves. And you pull moves. away. And you don't even think about it, do you? No, I don't. Move It just happens very quickly. Right. Now, can you think of anything else besides the sense of touch and the sense of pain that the brain gets information from to make the muscles move? Brain gets information? I mm -hmm. can't think of anything. Well, pick up the iron. What'd you pick that up for? You told me to. Well, then how, why did your muscle pick it up? I heard you, and I just picked it up. Yes. What happened? The sound of my voice hit your ear, didn't it? Yes, it did. Your ear changed this sound into electrical impulses that went up to your brain. Your brain interpreted them properly and said to the muscle, pick up the iron. Oh, I so. see. Well, everything works through the brain up there. Right. So sound is another method by which the brain gets information to tell the muscle to move. Where is sound important in your everyday life as far as making your muscles move? Well, in the morning when I wake up, I hear the alarm clock go off. Right. And then uh, at school, when the school bell rings, I, it means time to go to class or to mm -hmm. go home. Right. And then when the car honks its horn, that <laughs> means get out of the way. And you do it almost automatically there, yes, too, I don't do. you? So sound will work the same way. Now, there's one other uh, very, very important method by which the brain gets information to make your muscles move. What's Can you think that? what that is? I can't think well, maybe it. I can illustrate it with this friend of mine over here. Uh, see his arm? Yes, I do. Hey, well, that looks like Dave Garraway. <laughs> well, let's say that it, that it is Dave Garraway because uh, his arm moves up and he says pee. Now, let's say we want to send information to Dave Garraway to tell him to stop. All right. So here's the flashlight. And when you turn the flashlight on, you see the light down here? Yes, I do. So where, would the, where does the light have to strike in order for him to get information from light? Well, he has to see it. He okay, so you shine eye. it up there in his eye. Now move over just a little bit. There it is. Okay, now, let us say that this was a sign that said stop. Whoop, stop. Get a little closer, maybe. Yeah. This was a sign that said stop. The light from the sign goes into Dave Garraway's eyes. He then sends a message up to his brain. His brain then says uh, to his arm, stop going up and down. When the sign goes off, he now continues, he continues to, to, to do it. In fact, this, um, we'll have him stop now by turning off the switch, because uh, I wanted to show you that this is actually, uh, excuse me, Dave. <laughs> This is actually a lot more like the, uh, the brain and the uh, muscle system than you, than you realize. Because up here, I punched a hole in his eye over here. <laughs> so back here is an electric eye. Oh, see? I see. So when the light hit the electric eye, it threw a relay, which started the motor working. And the motor would represent the muscle then, wouldn't it? Oh, well, yes, it would. And his arm moved and up and down. His arm moved up and down. This would be the tendon. See, even the muscle is way back here. Here, let me turn it on again so you can see. See? Now his muscle is automatically working back and forth. And when I put this together, I put the strap too tight, and so I got a noise in there. But we'll just say that Dave's getting rusty, so okay. Now watch what happens when I shine the light in his eye. This sends the information moving. to stop. Whoop. There. He stops again. He can go. Okay. 
What information do you get, uh, you know, that makes your muscles move? What information through your eyes? Well, in school, when the teacher writes an assignment on the board, like, uh, turn to page 40, my muscles start turning to page 40. Mm -hmm. Going through your brain, of course. Yes, yeah. it does. How about something else? And then, see, on the way to school, when I see a stop sign or a red light, that means stop. Mm -hmm. My muscles so stop. Automatic. Not automatically. This time you think about it, because you have to know what the red signal means, yes. don't you? Yes. Anything else? Well, let's see. All the reading you do, of course, you get oh, information, yeah, and if it's, if you're, especially if you're going to make a doll or a dress or something, you read all the instructions on the pattern, mm -hmm. and your, your muscles, muscles do working, all very complicated yes. work. So far, we've now seen three systems of the body. What are they? Well, first the skeleton, skeleton. all the bones, mm -hmm. then the muscles, mm -hmm. and then the brain and nerves. The brain and the nerves. Right. Now, in order, uh, and oh, uh, by the way, I wanted to show you what this thing is over here, because I want you to see now how close you were to the heart. And let me explain how this thing is set up and so that you can explain it to me. See, current comes through here through this wire and goes up over here to this little clip that I have on, the, on yes. the back of the stand. So current can now go right through the stand itself, all the way up here through this bar, down through the coil. See? We run all the way down here through the coil, right through this clip on the end, and which is touching the mercury, see? Yes, it is. Okay, so current can go right straight through the mercury over here to this wire and all the way back through the switch again. Now, it so happens when current is flowing through here, magnetism is set up around each one of these little parts of the coil. So they're going to attract each other and they'll pull up like this. Oh, well, yes, and then there's no current down in the mercury. Right. So what's going to happen to the magnetism? Well, it's going to it, it'll, down Well, the, the magnetism is going to be, it, it will disappear. Yes. So the weight of the spring will bring it back down again. Down Contact again. is made. And more magnetism. Go. Right. So that's why it jumps up and down. And you can see how an electrical impulse is one of the things that makes the spring contract. Oh, yes, it is. And the heart works on exactly the, that same system because it's a muscle and automatically... Oh, yes, the electrical like impulse and then right. pumps back and forth. Uh -huh, pumps back and forth. So now we've got the, the skeleton, the muscles, and the nerves. nerves. Right. Now I'd like you to meet two friends of mine, Mr. Didn't and Mr. Did. Mr. Didn't and Mr. Did? Who are they? Are. Well, here they are over here. Oh, they're two little clowns, mm -hmm. Mr. Didn't and Mr. Did. Right. Now, watch what happened. Mr. Didn't is dancing very slowly and almost stopping. Mm -hmm. He is stopped now. And Mr. Did is still dancing very fast. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you suppose it is that Mr. Didn't didn't do and Mr. Did did do? Mr. Didn't didn't do and what Mr. Did did do. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure, but... Whatever it was, it sure worked for Mr. Did. Well, if you wanted to be like Mr. Didn't, what would you uh, do? And if you wanted to be, if you did want to be, you didn't want to be like Mr. Didn't, but you did want to be like Mr. Did, what would you do? Well, I would, I would, I know what I'd do. I'd follow the rules of good health. I'd get plenty of sleep, exercise, fresh air, water, and rest, plus three well-balanced meals a day, beginning with oh, a good breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread, and butter. Right. And that's what Mr. Didn't didn't do, and what <laughs> Mr. Did did do. Oh, I now, see. Seriously, though, this is very important, because nutrition experts have found that it's important for all of us to get from one-fourth to one-third of our whole day's food needs from the breakfast feed. And they've found that there's no better way than with the breakfast that Mr. Did did eat, or this breakfast up here. A breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread, and butter or other foods for variety, like eggs or breakfast meats. Well, a breakfast like that tastes good, too. Yes, it does, but really more important than that. Uh, the Cereal Institute has sponsored a series of scientific tests on children just about your age at a big Midwest medical school. And they found that when you had a good cereal breakfast, like that other one there, for instance, that you were able to do more and better work, and you'd feel better, too, especially during the late morning hours. And teachers have found that boys and girls will do better in school and at play when they start each day with a good breakfast. And that's why we say it's smart to start every day with a good breakfast. Like this one over here that Mr. Did had, right? Yes. A, a breakfast fruit, of fruit, cereal, cereal milk, milk bread, and, and butter. butter. Right. Well, if you follow these rules of good health and three well-balanced meals, starting with a good breakfast, you're just bound to be healthy and strong and get a lot more fun out of life like Mr. Did's, my, like Mr. Did does. No, like Mr. Did <laughs> does, yes. <laughs> now, in order to eat three well-balanced meals a day and be able to dance and, you know, have lots of activity yes. like Mr. Did does, you have to get all that energy to the muscle, don't you? Yes, you he do. He dances with his muscles. How does the food you eat that's solid and some liquids get to the muscles? 
Well, first we digest it. But right. I don't know what happens well, after that. Come over here and look at my little diagram of, of uh, the stomach, intestines, and mouth. You put solid food and liquid food here in your mouth. Yes, you do. Then what happens? And then you swallow it, and it goes down your stomach, and it's digested. Well, that's not quite right. Because the stomach, while some digestion does take place there, the stomach is more uh, a storage bin where the food is kept. And the actual digestion is done down here in the intestines. Oh, I see. Then it's all di digested down there. Most of it. That's not right. up there. I right. always thought it was in the stomach. Well, most people kind of think that the stomach digests food, and it does to some extent, but not, not really very much. It's the intestine that does most of it. Now we have a problem of getting the food, for, that's digested food, from the intestines into the muscle, all right? Yes. See if I can show you how that works up here. Let's say that you have eaten some food and is now in your uh, intestine and is digested. That means that it is in liquid form. It's dissolved, yes. like the ink or the dark color I have here in this water, right? Yes. Now let's pretend that this is blood that doesn't have food in it. We want to get the food into that blood. So you pour the clear liquid here into this funnel. Watch what happens when it goes down here and mixes with this and comes out over here. And let's pretend this is the muscle over All here. All right. See how we're picking up the coloring matter from here? Yes, and, and then it over bring here. it over to the muscle. Mm -hmm. so that's oh, how I see. Can... Well, then the blood comes down and picks up the food. And it's dissolved. It, it's dissolved mm -hmm. and it brings it to all parts of the body, right. the muscles. Now, what would happen here if we kept pouring more and more clear water in here? This would get dark, continue to get dark until we began to use up all the coloring matter that was down here. Then what would you have to do? When I get hungry, I have right. to eat more food. And that's where the stomach comes into play, by the way. Oh. When you get hungry, you know, you sometimes your stomach growls yes. and sometimes <laughs> it even kind of hurts. Well, this is because there's an automatic signal system in the stomach. When you, uh, when the s supply of food gets low, and also uh, depending upon your habit pattern, because some people eat at different times and so forth, whenever the stomach and the rest of the body feels that it needs food, rhythmic contractions are set up in the stomach, and that's what makes you feel hunger. Oh, and then I know when to eat, and, you know and then get more energy. Right. So now we see how the food gets over to the muscle. Now, what else do you need in the muscle to make it work? Well, it's all just food. Mm, no. Mm -mm. No? No. Here, let me see if I can show you. See, there's the door going outside over there. Yes. Over here is the door going into the kitchen. Yes. I want you to run as fast as you can and touch that door and then this door. And you keep going until I tell you to stop. Okay, go ahead. Okay, once more, and then come over here and stop. Oh. What are you puffing for? I'm out of breath from running. Well, now, you were using your muscles, weren't you? And yes, using energy and muscles, so what's that got to do with puffing? Why breathe so fast? Well, I don't know. I must be taking more air. Yeah, so the muscle must need something else. Must need air. Yeah, it must need air. When you use your muscles, you use more air. And listen, you know how you're puffing? Listen to this. You hear how it sounds the same? It sounds just like me. Mm -hmm. And for exactly the same reason. Because here's what's going on inside of you as you're breathing like this. Down here, in, in about, just about here in the belt section, is a diaphragm. That's a sort of a, a pancake-like muscle. When the diaphragm is down like this, the pressure inside the chest cavity, which is not connected to the outside air, by the way, gets greater, doesn't it? Because if you yes. make more room, this air has to spread over a greater area. So that means that there's not as much pressure on the balloons here, which represent your lung. So outside air comes down here through your nose and mouth, down through the bronchial tubes, which is that tube down there, and fills up the lungs. Oh, I see. Now, you explain what happens when the diaphragm goes up this way. Well, when it goes up, there's greater air pressure inside. Mm -hmm. and it's pushing against the lungs, mm -hmm. and then the air is forced, forced out of the outside. lungs. And when it goes down like this, you breathe in. When it goes up like that, you breathe I out. I breathe out. Right, so well, then the air is being forced out of me, then. Right, by a muscle. Oh, I see. So here it is, breathing away. So now we see at least that the air gets into your lungs, but we still have to get it over to the muscle, don't we? Yes, we do. Well, see if I can show you about how that works. The same system that we were using here in the, on the digestive system also works for the lungs, except that this time, air is dissolved in the, in the blood. Air is dissolved in the blood? You mean yes. we have air bubbles inside our blood? No, bubbles? not bubbles. The air is dissolved in the blood. See if I can show you that. 
Here, would you like... Is off? Well, here, you light the candle and I'll show you. All right. Okay, now here's some heat. See this uh, liquid? Yes, I do. You see any bubbles in it any place? No. Okay, if I hold this liquid over here, and you can't see anything dissolving. Watch what happens when I begin to heat it up. You see the bubbles? Oh, yes, little bubbles start to go up to the top. Okay, now I'm not boiling the water. Here, stick your finger in the top. No, it's still very cold. Very cold. And yet, by applying heat, I'm making bubbles come out. Well, how can you do that? Well, because this is soda water. Oh, I And I let it sit around here until the bubbling stopped, but there was still a lot of carbon dioxide, gas, dissolved in the water. Now, by applying a little heat, I'm making the carbon dioxide gas come out of solution. It was actually dissolved right in the water. Well, do we have carbon dioxide inside of us? Right. You have carbon dioxide dissolved in your blood in much the same way, and you also have oxygen dissolved in your blood. So you see how you can have oxygen dissolved? If we yes, could dissolve carbon dioxide now. here? In fact, uh, fish breathe, don't they? Yes, they see them on the they bank and, you and they breathe underwater and they breathe air that's dissolved in the water. Well, that's right. Otherwise, they couldn't live. Right. They couldn't live. And it's not bubbles of air in the water, remember. Oh, or in the blood. I see. Now it's actually it's air dissolved. dissolved. So what happens is this. When you breathe air in and it goes down into your lungs, in very fine vessels in your lungs, the air is dissolved in the bloodstream. Now we have air down in here. Dissolved, yes, we right? do. So here we have air coming from, or uh, blood coming from the part of the body, and it has carbon dioxide in it. See, the, yes. from the waste products uh, uh, in the muscle, as the, the carbon dioxide uh, that's in the blood comes down here with the blood, and the carbon dioxide is changed and goes out into the lung and you breathe it out, while the oxygen goes into the blood and is carried over here to the muscle. Oh, I so see. So pour some water. Get rid of the carbon dioxide mm -hmm. by oxygen. So carbon dioxide comes out of the blood while oxygen goes into the blood and is carried over here to the muscle, just like we did with the food. Just like the food. Mm -hmm. Well, then the blood carries air and food to right. the muscles and the reason, gives us strength. The right. The reason it has to do this is because in order for the body to use the food, it has to burn it, in effect, a chemical reaction, something like burning. And it has to have oxygen to do this. Well, yes, it does. And the more you exercise... The, the more fuel you need. And the more air you need to oxidize yes. the food. Well, now, how many systems have we got so far? Well, now we have the skeleton, and the muscles, and the nervous system, and the digestive system. Mm -hmm. And the lungs. And the lungs. Okay. Now, we now have blood here. Yes. With air and food dissolved in it, we have to get the blood to the muscle. How do we do that? Well, it has to go through the body. Yeah, but how, what is it that forces the blood to go to all parts oh, of the body? Oh, I know, the heart. Right, the heart. And the heart is a muscle. It looks, uh, let's pretend, something like this. Okay. So you squeeze on that once and watch what happens. Now, you see, as you squeeze here, liquid is coming from here. That's coming from over here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because this is a special kind of a bulb. It has little valves in here that open to let the water go this way, but close when it tries to go this way. So we only have water going in this direction. Only going in one way. And that's exactly the way the heart works. It has valves that close when it starts to squeeze to prevent the blood from going backwards and only goes forward. Try it again. Well, then the heart pumps the blood around the body. There you and notice here, when you push on this one, that the valve is leaking a little bit because the water goes up here when you push? Oh, yes. Well, this a doctor would diagnose by using a special instrument, and that would be a very serious condition. So this is not quite accurate like a healthy heart. But at least you see now how this pump can run the blood from there over to yes, here. Yes, I can. Now, you put your finger right there while I squeeze. Hold it in fairly tight. You feel anything? Yes, I can feel the blood being rushed through there. Yeah, it's being pushed through there, right? You can feel the pressure when I yes, push. Yes, I can. Okay, now you can do the same thing to the pressure that's being built up by your heart. <coughs> this is one thing they do not do with the heart. <laughs> Let me put this towel down, because I want you to... I want you to get wet. Now, your heart is beating, right? Yes, and forcing this blood around. We can feel that pressure by holding your wrist up like this. And you feel the bone right there. Try it on this hand, so you have the same hand. There's a bone right there, right? Yes. Okay, just below that bone, you put three fingers of, of your hand. Now, what do you feel? I can feel my heart beating. Right. You can feel the pulse. This is not your heart, uh, no. <laughs> heart itself. It's the surge from the heart 
going through this particular little blood vessel right here, and you can feel it. Oh, I see. In fact, you can actually hear your heart by making a homemade stethoscope. You know what a stethoscope yes, is? Yes, the doctor uses that to listen to my heart. Mm -hmm. Well, here's all you need to make one of your own. You get a funnel. It doesn't have to be glass. It can be made of tin, you know, mm -hmm. like your mother uses for cooking. You put a rubber tube on the end of it like this. Yes. Okay, now you take that end and hold it up to your ear. And you put this round on your chest until you can see, hear your heart. I can hear it. Sure. It's going bump, bump, bump. At least it's beating. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you try, you, uh, why don't you take that home with you and you can try this and see, you check your father's heart, oh, good. your mother's heart. And if you want to do some real scientific experiments with it, you actually count the number of beats there are in, in, in one minute. When you check yours and your father's and your mother's, I think you'll find that there's some difference between yours and theirs. There is. Mm -hmm, because children's hearts beat at a different rate than adults. Oh. So you take as home. long as I keep beating, though. Okay. Well, now I think we've seen all of the systems. It's time to go back and take a look at Kathy over there and see if you can explain what all those things are with Kathy. Come on. All right. Now you uh, see those little, those little things here? You turn yes. them up and you turn them around this way because each one of those is a sign. It has one of the systems of the, of the um, body in it. Well, I get Kathy fixed up here. Ah, maybe I can pump it in. Hold the bottle. That's it. Put the cork in. Come on, come on there. Ah, well, let's let it go. See if you can fill it up with air when we get started. Okay. Because this thing has to go up here like this. Well, now it's starting to fill up. Okay. Now I want to put some salt up here. Okay. Now you begin to look at this system and see if you can figure it out while I get the rest of it hooked up. I won't see. This is going to do the pumping, right? Mm -hmm. well, that would be the heart, then. Let's see. This is doing the pumping, and it's blowing that up, and that would be like the lungs, the air. And the salt would go in here and mix with the water and probably dissolve, so that would be the stomach, right? right. Salt's going to run down here and dissolve in the water, and that's going to be the stomach. Let's now, see. What happens here, however, is when, when the salt dissolves in the water, it means that it can now conduct current. So electric current is going down through and run over here to this thing over here, and the spark is going to jump across there. So what would that, that be? That would be the nerve. Right, the nerve. And when the spark jumps across there, that's going to set this paper on fire, which is going to then burn and allow this, this uh, thread to move that way so that the, the rubber band can now contract. That would be the muscle. When the rubber band contracts, that pulls on a little thread I've got here and makes the skeleton move. The skeleton. That's a skeleton. Okay, so now you see how we have the six major systems of the body? Yes, I do. Okay, I don't know. You try it and see how Kathy's doing today. Alrighty. Okay. Ah, uh, my heart's leaking here. Let's dump it here so you can see <laughs> it all the way. Too. Oh, well, what are you going to do next week, N Mr. Wheeler? Next week, we're going to investigate fire, and I'll show you. Fire. That sounds very interesting. Some sugar. And... Well, what did I do with it? Well, anyway, I'll, uh, what I'm going to do next week is actually burn some sugar it, by giving it all the right ingredients. And you'll find out what those ingredients are next week when we investigate fire.